Hello everyone, welcome to the third unit of the series on density functional theory. In the last units, I talk about the fundamentals of DFT that includes many body Schrodinger equation and the approximations for DFT. In this unit, I'm going to talk about density functional theory more deeply and Hartree and Hartree Fog theories and exchange interaction that is the main difference between uh, uh, these two theories, Hartree and Hartree Fog equations. These theories have a very significant role in the electronic structure and DFT, and knowing them is essential before going to DFT. So, um, by listening to this unit, you more deeply understand the theories behind DFT, exchange interactions, and quantitative predictions of electronic structures. So, knowing that the, the theories which will be explained in this unit is highly suggested to do more accurate calculations and feel better about uh, the calculated results. Uh, well, let's first review the last units. In the first unit, we discussed about the challenge of three n dimensionality of the many body Schrodinger equation and understood that uh, it's impossible to computationally solve the Schrodinger equation. And then in the second unit, we discuss about the approximations to get rid of this challenge of 3N dimensionality of the Schrodinger equation. The approximation we discuss was first the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, that based on this approximation, the dynamics of ions and electrons can be separated because the ions are heavy and slow, but the uh, uh, electrons are small and fast. Second approximation was that the wave function was written as a product of single uh, particle wave functions, so that the probabilities are the product of many single probabilities, and we are neglecting correlations. By setting this simple wave function into the Born-Oppenheimer-Schrodinger equation, we get the single electron Hartree equations. In a Hartree equation, we are dealing with a set of orbitals and that can be obtained by solving a single uh, electron Schrodinger equation that includes the kinetic energy of the orbitals and the interaction of that orbital with others uh, and then the interaction between one specific electron and uh, other electrons in our system, but in a mean field kind of way, where all the other electrons are uh, averaged. And uh, also, uh, we discuss about these approximations, but uh, we need to make uh, that approximation to be able to solve uh, this equation. We will discuss about that in this unit, how we can solve the Hartree equations. Now here we will talk about the Hartree and Hartree-Fock equations and the main difference between them which is exchange interaction in a very understandable way. We already understood that Hartree equation leads to solving a three-dimensional problem in uh, n times instead of solving three n-dimensional problem in Born-Oppenheimer-Schrodinger equation which uh, we discussed many times that is impossible to try to solve. So by having a Hartree equation, we can solve uh, three-dimensional problems n times instead of uh, solving one uh, three n-dimensional problems of uh, Schrodinger equation that's uh, imp impossible to uh, computationally try to solve. But uh, there are some challenges here that we will uh, talk about them. As we know already, this is a self-consistent field calculation, and the effective Ham Hamiltonian depends on the orbitals that we, we are going to find. This should be solved in, in uh, an iterative way, so uh, we need an initial guess for a set of orbitals uh, to, build an effect to build the effective Hamiltonian. Then we find a new set of orbital by solving the single uh, electron Schrodinger equation and we iterate until finding the self-consistency. Then after finding the self-consistent orbitals, the average energy can be computed by calculating the expectation value 
of uh, the, that wave function that we already descri described. So we have the kinetic energy of each orbitals and the, the interaction of each orbital with the ions and the electron-electron interaction uh, uh, also in a mean field kind of way as we described uh, early, earlier about that. Now I'm going to talk about the problem of Hart's theory that assumes the electrons are distinguishable, which they are not. It means that based on the Hart's theory, for example, electron 1 is for orbital 1 and electron 2 is for orbital 2. However, indeed, we do not exactly know which electron is for which orbitals. This is the main problem of Hart's theory. In the simplest explanation way, I can say that, uh, as we already know, the wave functions are anti-symmetry. Uh, that's why swapping two electrons uh, leads to change of sign in the wave functions. However, the Hart theory does not take this principle into account. For example, in the case of two electrons in a system, in a very uh, simple case, if you swap electrons and change the variables, psi1 of r1 times psi2 of r2 is not the same as uh, psi1 of r2 times psi2 of r1. These two functions are different. So by changing the electrons in the orbitals, the Hart tree will fail. To get rid of this problem, there is a very simple modification we can do to the wave functions that's the product of single particle orbitals that would make it have uh, the right symmetry. Then another term were added to the expectation value of Hart tree equation that is called exchange interaction. This term is originated purely from the antisymmetric nature of the wave functions. So let's start with the expression uh, for the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, that's the average energy. As you can see here, the first term is uh, the same as before. As before, it has the kinetic energy of each electron, the interaction of uh, every electron with all the ions, uh, that's the same as with the Hart theory. Then I have a term that's the Coulomb interaction between electrons. Remember here, probability of finding one electron times the probability of finding the other electron over the di separation distance between these two electrons. Uh, this is called the Hart tree potential. And uh, it's effective interaction in a mean field kind of way between electrons, electron, electron interactions. However, because of these antisymmetric wave functions, as we said, uh, there is one more term in the energy, and this term is called the exchange interaction. I tried to explain the concept of the exchange interaction in a very general way. You can get more information from the reference uh, that I introduced to you at the end of this unit. So let's look at this new term, the exchange interaction term. We have orbital i, uh, but evaluated over r and r prime. And also there uh, we have orbital j, uh, and also evaluated uh, at r prime and r. Keep in mind that the second term, the exchange interaction, uh, exchange interaction term, is not the expectation value of an energy term. The first term, the Hart tree potential, as we understood uh, what that means, is the product of the probabilities. But the second term, the exchange interaction, there is no probability, and uh, this term originates purely from the antisymmetric nature of the wave function, and again, it's called exchange interaction term. So what you can see at the top is the expectation value for the Hamiltonian, including both Hart tree uh, and exchange interaction term. As we said, the exchange interaction term is the main difference between the Hart tree and Hart tree equations. And to find the orbitals, 
we need to solve a set of single electron Schrodinger equations that you see at the bottom here. So as I said before, the Hartree-Fock uh, equations was the first story that we had and allowed us to have quantitative predictions for atomic system uh, that was computationally possible. As a summary of this unit, we have the difficulty of problem solving because of 3N dimensionality of Born-Oppenheimer-Schrodinger equation. Then we made an approximation that the many-body wave function is the product of single particle wave functions that neglects correlations, leading to Hartree equations. But the Hartree equations had a problem because of the nature of anti-symmetry of the wave functions. So in hartree fock uh, in order to tackle this problem, the key difference is that instead of using simple pro products of single particle wave functions, they added another term to the Hartree term that is called exchange interaction term uh, that they have uh, the right antisymmetry. So when you apply that, you get the same uh, terms kinetic energy uh, Electron-ion uh, interactions and electron-electron interaction, and you get all this term in addition to the quantum term that is called exchange interaction term, which is not classical but is critical for quantitative predictions. As I said before, I tried to explain the concept of the Hartree and Hartree-Fock theories and exchange interaction, which is the main difference between these Hartree and Hartree-Fock uh, equations in a very understandable way. And if you want to get more information about that, there is one reference that I will introduce to you at the end of this unit, where you can uh, study more about uh, Hartree and Hartree-Fock. In the next unit, uh, we will discuss about the DFT, which is uh, today is the most computational tools for electronic structure calculations in computational materials. Well, as I said before, I tried to explain the concept of the exchange interaction in a very you know, simple and understandable way. And I tried to just introduce the general concept behind the hard tree and hard tree fog theories and explain the difference between these theories that is very necessary for doing uh, before going to density functional theory. And if you want to get more information about that, uh, about these two theories, that I would suggest a computational physics book by Joseph Maria where you can study more about uh, these two theories, the uh, Hartree and Hartree-Fock equations. Well, in the next unit, we will continue mm, talking about density functional theory, and uh, I will talk about the Quan-Sham theory, which is the heart of DFT. So please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified the next videos, and thank you very much uh, for listening.